Welcome to the world of John's Manville insulation. Let's walk through the process of insulating walls to achieve the recommended R value so you can see how easy and painless the job can be, one that anyone can do with a few instructions. First, you need to figure out what kind of insulation you should use. There are two main types, pre-cut bats and rolls. Pre-cut bats are easiest to handle when you're filling standard sized spaces like walls, so there's less cutting. That's what we'll use on this project. Rolls are great for long runs in attics, but that's a different video. Crack face or unfaced insulation are both good to use for different parts of your house. Get crack face insulation for your exterior walls, exterior basement walls, and attic ceiling. That crack facing or vapor retarder works really hard to keep moisture inside your home and out of the walls, where it could condense and cause mold and other problems. In some areas, like the extreme northern U.S., code may require you to use an unfaced insulation with plastic sheeting as a vapor retarder. No craft facing here. For interior walls and floors, choose unfaced insulation. They won't need that extra moisture protection. Make sure to buy the correct R value for your project. A 2x4 stud wall can hold R13 or 15. A 2x6 stud wall can hold R19 or 21 and don't forget the right tools and safety gear. Fiberglass insulation has come a long way. While it's much softer now, it may cause temporary skin irritation. So it's important to wear safety goggles and protective clothing. You'll likely be working in dusty, unfinished spaces. So let's get down to it. Measure your wall cavity opening to make sure your insulation will fit top to bottom, side to side. If it needs a trim, cut it using a utility knife and a straight edge, like a 2x4. If you're working with a space that's narrower than your insulation, cut it down the center for a good fit. For craft face insulation, all you need to do is press it into the wall cavity, paper side facing toward you. Make sure you push it all the way to the back, especially the corners and edges. Then pull it forward a bit so the insulation expands and fills the entire space. Tiny pockets in the insulation prevent the heat and cold from moving through the wall. So while your insulation should be snug in the wall cavity, try not to compress the insulation or else you'll lose those pockets and lower its insulating power, or R value. These craft face bats have a flange, this overhanging paper piece that you can staple onto the framing. Grab your staple gun to hold your insulation into place, or don't, friction alone will hold the insulation in place. There are a couple different ways to staple your insulation. One way is inset stapling. With this technique, you'll staple the flange to the inside of the wall stud like this. You'll want to use this method if your next step is to hang drywall because it ensures you have a smooth surface on the stud. It makes drywall hanging much easier. The other technique is face stapling where you staple the flange to the front of the wall stud. For both techniques, you'll want to place your staples about 8 inches apart and make sure you don't leave any gaps or stretch it too tight. Install unfaced insulation the exact same way. You just don't have to staple it. It's no sweat. Check around windows and doors for gaps you might have missed. Just take the scraps and push into the space using your screwdriver. Be careful not to overstuff it. Then apply a canned foam insulation over the fiberglass. Be careful, it expands quickly. Test small sprays at a time to make sure you don't overfill. And that's all there is to it. To increase your insulation IQ, watch our other JM videos. See what else you can learn. 